Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brianna and this is For Pause in a Book. I make book and lifestyle related content so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure that you hit the subscribe button down below. Today we are going to be talking about some of my favorite thrillers and horror books that I read in 2022. <laughs> If you are just stumbling upon this video or you are new to my channel, I am doing an entire series this week uh, talking about some of my favorite books that I read this year. I have read close to 175 books as of filming this and obviously I can't talk about all of them in my like favorites. I like, you know, but I did have a lot of books that I really enjoyed. So this week I am doing a series where I'm breaking down each genre and I'm talking about all of the books that I gave four or five stars to four, four and a half or five stars actually. <laughs> and uh, just, you know, allowing myself to highlight some of these books. Hopefully this will give you um, some sort of recommendations. I would like to point out that some of these books may be HarperCollins titles or imprints as of filming this. They are still on strike. So I will be briefly talking about these books. And these are all books that I previously reviewed prior to the strike happening. Uh, so these aren't like new reviews or anything like that. But I do want to make sure that you guys are aware of the HarperCollins strike. So all of the information is going to be down below in all of these videos. So I didn't read a ton of thrillers or horrors this year. So I'm combining the, the genres together um, to bring you a, a video. And I do have a few books that I want to talk about. The first one is a YA title and that is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is kind of a retelling of The Haunting of Hill House and it's about this family that has to move into this house um, because of her dad's job and um, it's like a very old rundown house. This book has excellent mental health rep. The main character definitely struggles with anxiety, probably OCD, um, like a lot of things. She's very concerned about bed bugs in the house and termites and like she has these like panic attacks because she thinks that there are termites and bed bugs in the house um, and like just just goes into hysteria and just really struggles with that aspect of it. Um, this is a kind of paranormal, kind of like haunted, um, haunted house story. There are some like nefarious neighbors, like townspeople. It's very like small town vibes, but in a spooky way. <laughs> I think a lot of times at the end of the year, we're talking about like small town vibes when it comes to Christmas romances, but this is not those kind of small town vibes. This is the haunted small town vibes. And uh, this was the first book that I read by Tiffany D. Jackson. I wanted to read The Weight of Blood as well because everyone said that, that one was really good, but I wanted to read her backlist first. So this is where I started. I ended up giving this one four stars and I really, really liked it. Next up is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. This is actually the first book that I've read by Grady Hendrix and I will 100% be reading more in the future. This book is really cool and I've talked about this a lot, but the book looks like an Ikea instruction kit or a ca um, catalog. It is about this store called Orsk, which is very much like an Ikea. Um, and uh, it may or may not be haunted. This book is is kind of fun in its horror. It's kind of this horror comedy. These characters are just really up, like above and beyond. And I think that if anyone has ever worked in retail, this is a book for you. Uh, because you know, as we know, if you've worked in retail, that is the real horror. One of the things that this book did really well was set this like the setting, right? Um, this takes place like completely within this Ikea or store. And if you've ever worked in retail, especially in like big box stores, um, you know how spooky they can be when the lights are all off and it's the middle of the night and it's dark and there's long shadows. And, and this book really like plays into that and really like adds to that drama. So highly recommend this. I will definitely be reading more Grady Hendrix in 2023. Next up, we have A Flicker in the Dark by St Stacey Willingham. This is a debut and this was fantastic. I read this this summer and it was just a perfect summer thriller. It takes place in the South. I want to say it was Louisiana. Yep, small Louisiana town. And when this girl was a child, her father was convicted of kidnapping and killing a bunch of girls in the town. And now 20 years later, it's happening again. Um, and so the police are trying to work with her, trying to essentially like see if she can remember things. And like, they're kind of going back and thinking that maybe it wasn't the original person to begin with, if this is a copycat killer. There are so many characters in this book that could have been the killer. 
the author did such a fantastic job with red herrings and like you did not know which way to look in this book it was very fast paced it was very very well done um and like from a from a debut author fantastic i just got her newest release from a book of the month and i'm very excited to read that one early in 2023 then we have Stay Awake by Megan Golden. This is the third book that I have read from Megan Golden. I think that it's probably my second favorite of hers. I do think that The Night Swim was probably a little bit better, but that one was just so well done, plus the podcast element. It was fantastic. This is about a woman who has to stay awake, interestingly enough. So this woman wakes up in the back of the cab and uh, has the words, stay awake written all over her her hands her arms um everything is like you know trying to remember like don't fall asleep you forget things when you fall asleep she has no idea why she's in a cab where she is what's going on she tries to go back to her apartment it's not actually her apartment someone else lives there what is going on and that is the mood of this entire book Sometimes I don't like unreliable narrators, but Megan Golden did this one so well. Um, you had so much anxiety as a reader trying to figure this out because you you had as much information as she did the entire time. You didn't know things that she didn't know. And so the vibe of this book was just so like anxiety inducing and and terrifying. And one of the things that like is a personal fear of mine is like not knowing what's going on around me not knowing what I'm doing not being in like full mental capacity so like this was terrifying yeah mm, no I do think that the ending was a little bit too rushed but it was still a fantastic book. Next up is a book that I recently read and that is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This book is an excellent slasher uh and like horror book uh it's kind of an ode to slasher films but in a very accessible way I read um Night of the Mannequins prior to reading this and didn't really love it so I actually went into this one with very low expectations because I was afraid that the writing style just wasn't going to work for me and I was dead wrong dead wrong this was four and a half stars this was fantastic and I'm very excited to read the second book I actually thought this was a standalone accidentally had it on my R fantasy standalone uh, like prompt as a standalone it's not a standalone so I gotta figure that one out this was so good this was so good as someone who does not watch slashers does not watch horror films in general I don't like them I really appreciated the fact that this book was kind of like her writing a thesis on slashers and horror films and like especially like the classics in a way that like I was able to understand the references I was able to understand the like nuances because it was just explained in a way that was like very accessible however I don't think that if you did know what these movies were about you would be bored or like uninterested in it I just I think he wove it in so well and this is all about a woman who or like a, a girl who thinks that she is in a slasher um like everything is happening around her in this little town that is like very reminiscent of what like ha like a lot of the slasher tropes and it's kind of meta in a way because she kind of was like well that can't happen she's not the final girl she has to be the final girl and uh like it was just kind of interestingly meta and like she was aware that she was doing this um and this is like the pure definition of a hyper focus. This character I would definitely bet is neurodivergent in some way. The hyper fo focus, the hyper fixation was real. Um, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy this, especially as someone who doesn't like, I, I don't know, slashers is definitely not a genre or a subgenre that I love. Um, <laughs> But this was well done. I think I read this entire book in 24 hours, which is pretty good saying it's like 400 pages. Next up was the first thriller that I read all year and that was The Overnight Guest by Heather Gutenkopf. I actually did an entire vlog about this when I was reading Barnes and Noble's picks for their like book club uh, picks. I'll link it up there. This actually was really good. It was a very like snowed in thriller. It had a true crime element to it. There's not a lot I can talk to you about this book because there's a lot of spoilers in it. I do think that this book was a little bit slow at times, but I think that that was the point of this book. A lot of times thrillers have this like really fast paced, like edge of your seat kind of vibe pace. This one was the opposite of that in the fact that it was so slow burn that you were just anticipating everything. And you were like, oh, something's around the corner. Something's around the corner. Something's around the corner. And like, 
that's just a whole different type of thriller that I think I actually enjoy. Um, but this is about a woman who gets snowed in at a cabin. She wants to be snowed in. She's trying to write this book. Then she finds a child, finds out she's not as isolated as she thought she is. Someone's trying to find them. Uh, it's a whole thing. I do think that the ending wrapped up too nicely. Uh, it was like, you know, put a big bow on it. And sometimes we don't want that in thrillers, but um, it was still fantastic. And then the last one was um, an interesting experiment and one that I'm surprised by. Uh, Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine M. Valente. I've always said that I don't really love novellas, but I think it's because I only had read like romance novellas in the past and it's really hard to do a whole romance in a novella. But short horror, this is terrifying. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is very domestic feeling in this that sense where like they all live in this perfect town. Um, they like, you know, they all seem to have like seemingly picture perfect lives, but then like something else, some, something's going on under, like underneath that thin layer, something is really creepy. When you find the plot twist of this book, uh, you will it will blow your mind. It's actually why I ended up purchasing a physical copy of this. I don't normally purchase novellas because they're like full price books for a very small, um, you know, something that I'll read in a couple hours. However, um, I listened to this one on audio originally and this was a book that I knew that I was going to reread because now that I know the twist, I want to go back and like find the little you know easter eggs in it this was good i can't tell you much about it though because it's literally less than 100 pages or right at 100 pages and um it, it will spoil way too much just know it was good go into it blind Okay, so those were some thriller and horror books that I really enjoyed this year. Let me know down in the comments below a thriller or a horror that you enjoyed or multiple, that's fine. And we'll just have a recommendations thread in the comments. If you're not feeling chatty, you can do the <gasps> scared emoji. That is all I have for you today. If you're new here and you have not yet subscribed, there's a little red button that you can do so down below the video. If you'd like to hang out with me more, the links to my Instagram, Goodreads, Twitter, and my Patreon are linked in the description below. Like I said, I will be doing a video for a bunch of different genres every single day this week. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.